we have to help journalism survive because civil society can't act if they don't have the facts. The number of deaths per day, the pressure on the hospital systems, businesses still not being fully open. We've had five plus years of bad things from the dairy industry. This on top of the COVID is the test that we've never had to face before. When my uncle got sick, it went from something that you just hear in the news to somebody so close. How do you practice social distancing and keep yourself safe when you're in ICE detention? As this topic is becoming more and more important, we're also seeing a lot of newsrooms shrink. I've been supported by the Pulitzer Center and they provide funding to help get stories that haven't been represented very much in the mainstream media. This was in the middle of a pandemic. Borders were closed. We found journalists already in the countries who had existing networks and contacts and brought them into the project. And you know what? I think that the end result was much stronger. We have to keep trying to figure out a way uh, to keep these important journalistic enterprises going. Why? Because our democracy depends on it. We packed our food for five days and with guides we hired, followed the migrants as they set out. Code for Africa is changing the story by putting Makoko on the map. Journalism is the best way of teaching students to consider opposing viewpoints and to create open-minded, curious learners. And that's really my role as an educator. The Pulitzer Center, they turned journalism into curriculum. It's been their most downloaded curriculum that they have produced. The 1619 Project is for everyone, and the curriculum is for educators and for school-age children. Storytelling on this project would not have been possible if it weren't for the support of the Pulitzer Center. The story was produced with the support of the Pulitzer Center. The Pulitzer Center. Pulitzer Center. Pulitzer Center on crisis reporting.